Welcome to Follow the Crowd, find the people who want to buy your product. My name is Amy Jauman. I'm the Chief Learning Officer for the National Institute for Social Media. And this is the first of three webinars, if you choose to listen to all three, where we will explore a variety of ways you can get to know more about your market. The first topic that's covered in this webinar is six questions that you can ask to find new customers or even different ways that you can explore the relationships you already have with your existing buyers and perhaps find new and better ways uh, to connect with them. The second video explores three very specific techniques for learning more about your market. And that's an introduction to an, actually a longer course that is available. If you want more information on the longer course, the link is um, in the description of this video. So you can check that out there. Uh, we also talk more about that longer course in the second video. So be sure to be sure to check that out. And then finally, the last webinar is creating a plan that will allow you to take all this great market information and put it to work for you in a way that works within your business. Everyone has different uh, obviously goals, they're uh, working with a different product, and you have different resources available. And we see this uh, mistake so often where people have these, these great intentions and they set these lofty goals, but they, they really never had a chance of making them because they, they just tried to, to stretch what they had so far. So what we're going to work on is helping you create a plan that fits your unique goals and resources. So that's the whole package. That's all three of these uh, webinars coming together. But as I said, our first one is looking at six questions that you can ask to find these, these customers. Now, for this particular portion of the webinar, there's also a worksheet that can help guide you through the process that is available uh, to you as well. However, if you haven't downloaded the worksheet or didn't don't have a printer or something along those lines, no worries. You can just go ahead and take notes as we talk through. I do want to advise you, though, as we talk about these six questions, to make the most out of the pause feature that you have with any uh, video. I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions, giving you a lot of things to think about, and sometimes it's better if you just work at your own pace and stop the video and think a little bit about what that question means to you. Now, I might remind you here and there to do that, but otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it up to you to realize when those opportunities arise. The other thing that I will mention is that sometimes it's best to listen to webinars like this once all the way through and then listen a second time and try pausing and actually answering the questions and working through the content that way. Uh, just a couple of suggestions. Certainly you are free to work with the content in whatever way makes the most sense for you, uh, but just want to, to share those ideas. So let's jump in and talk about who. So who is buying your product and who is using your product or even products that are similar to yours? Now, this who question is one that I like to throw out and I like to put it out there early because a lot of times as business owners, we feel very confident that we know exactly who our users are. And with that confidence, sometimes we kind of miss some cues here and there when we try to translate that into our marketing plan. So first of all, who's buying your product? You probably know right off the top of your head a segment or kind of a description of people who typically buy your product. If you don't, if your knee-jerk reaction to this is, everybody buys my product, my product is good for everyone, right there you've got a pretty significant problem because if you're marketing to everyone you're marketing to no one so try to refine that even if you have to choose like a couple of groups of people who is it who specifically uh, zeroes in on your product is most interested is most engaged with with your product so on top of that there is sometimes a deeper dive into who's actually using your product. So what that means is sometimes the person who's buying your product isn't the person who's using it. Maybe the most obvious answer is, uh, or the most obvious example is, someone who, a parent who might buy a product for their child. Uh, so if you have that distinction, it's really important to note that in your marketing plan because you could be, uh, it could influence the, the language. 
There's another example. So I I worked for years in the hair care business, and one of my favorite examples was the discovery of a high percentage of men have their hair care products purchased by women in their lives. So whether that is a mother, a girlfriend, a wife, the, the funny kind of Uh, discovery, or funny to me anyway, was for that particular product, men oftentimes didn't care necessarily what uh, what they would buy. If they were out of shampoo and they were at the grocery store, they'd, they'd grab something off the shelf. But when it came to higher end products or really picking something nice out, a lot of times it was the, the women doing the shopping. So here you have this product being used by men, but chosen by women. Now, if you're selling a product and you happen to know that that's the case, think about how that's going to actually change your message. Who are you really talking to at that point? A lot of times you have to shift the language that you use to actually be speaking uh, to the buyer. The the kind of second part of that question too is, who's using products similar to yours? This certainly doesn't apply to everyone, uh, but there may be some cases where you have a product that is solving the same problem, or that is maybe complementary or, or somehow tied to your product, expand what you're looking at just a little bit and, and figure out who is out there using products similar to yours. So now is a time you might opt to pause the video, think about this demographic a little bit, uh, maybe try to kind of zero in on not only things, obvious things like age and gender, uh, but also think about who the, the buyers are what do they, um, what other things might they, might they have in common? And we're actually going to build on this exact topic here in, in just a moment, but I encourage you to reflect on that uh, briefly here before we go on and talk about the what. So I indicated that we were going to build on this who, and, and here it is. What interests do your customers have and what challenges do your customers have? So if you are talking about, you know, maybe you have created a running shoe, what interests do your customers have? What are people who buy running shoes also interested in? It could be any number of things. could be different sports. It could be um, other kinds of athletic uh, wear or clothing, anything along those lines. Start thinking about kind of branching out to aside from the product that they buy from you, what other products might they buy and what other hobbies or interests might they have? Again, this is going to contribute to the kind of bigger picture, the the language that you're going to use, the sites that you're going to um, hang out at to connect with the right people or groups that you might become involved with on, on social media knowing more and thinking more about the interests that your customers have is just going to help you connect in new and in different ways. And our second question, what challenges do your customers have, goes back to, again, what problem are you solving? Or what problem could you solve? Or what problem might you even just introduce and talk about? You know, one of the reasons that YouTube is so successful is the number of videos that are available that solve a problem. If you are, you know, if your front door broke and you can't quite figure out what's wrong with it, but you uh, know what piece is broken and needs to be repaired, a quick YouTube search might have a, a video that can tell you exactly how to do that. That's solving a problem. Now, what does that look like for your business? Could be anything. But it's something to think about. So, what are what is your what are your buyers and your potential buyers uh, interested in and thinking about? Now, where where do your customers spend their time, and where do they buy your product? So, the where do they spend their time element is probably one you thought about before when it comes to social media sites. Uh, you might consider demographics and be able to determine, oh yeah, most of them are on this particular social media platform. Or you might have noticed more activity uh, for, from your competitors or even from your own sites in specific places. But where they spend their, their time is a, a fantastic question. But I want you to also take it outside of social media. Where else do they spend their time? Do they go to festivals? Do they um, eat out at restaurants a lot? Again, because this is just widening out that profile and possibly finding um, more ways to connect. 
And where do they buy your product is a critical question and one that I always encourage people to explore with an experiential question. We'll talk more about this in the full course. Again, if you want more info on that, it's in the, the description of this, of this video. Feel free to check that out. Um, but when we look at surveying and asking people questions, we always want to be careful not to set them up to uh, lie to us. I don't know a nicer way of saying that, but an example I always use is um, I work with a lot of local authors. We have a lot of conversations about uh, supporting small businesses and, and writers in the community. And if you ask someone in this group, uh, where do you buy your books from? They might say something like, oh, I always shop at a little local bookstore, or I try to buy directly from the author because I want to support them. And that is all true. That is absolutely true, right? They're not, they're not intentionally misleading you. But if you ask them something like, where, when you last bought a book, where did you buy it from? Right, so ask them a question that is more concrete. So they actually have to go back to their own memory. And you might hear them say something like, oh, well, the last book I bought, I actually got on Amazon. Well, you know, it was a really specific one. And, um, you know, one of my grandkids had asked for it and he sent me the link and it was easy and, and that's how I ordered it. This doesn't mean that the whole world is terrible and evil and bad and trying to lie to you. It means that sometimes our memory of what we do or what we think we do isn't quite accurate, but we can help people tell us what their actual behaviors are if we ask them those experiential questions. Things like, uh, the last time you needed this service, how did you go about finding it? Um, things that allow them to go back um, into their own memories. And they may tell you even more, right? They may want to start qualifying and, and explaining, well, technically the last book I bought, I bought it at Amazon, but the one before that, I bought it directly from the author. That's awesome. That's just more data. Uh, but it's, it's unless they are going out of their way to not tell you the truth, it is a better way to get a more honest answer. When do people buy your products and what events trigger purchases? Here is another fun one to think about that definitely influences some products more than others. If you don't have any kind of a buying cycle, it's you have a pretty unusual product. Most people can usually indicate when there is an increase in activity on their sites and you know within purchasing. Uh, patterns. The important piece is to be able to go back and determine what is causing those patterns to emerge, right? So if you have a holiday and that holiday triggers people to purchase your item or contract you for services, knowing things like that can help you prepare for um, kind of ebb and flow of business, it might cause you to run a deal, it might cause you to not run a deal, right? Because you don't need to drive business that particular time of year or something along those lines. The important piece is to understand the kind of buying calendar of your customers. When do you see those kind of bumps in business and when do you see the, the dips, of course? Now, the other consideration with the win of all of this is if you know some of those lulls are coming, is there anything you can do about it? So can you maybe offer some promotions when things are a little quieter? Can you do a different product offering when people are less active um, on your on your sites or in downloading your uh, particular product or even in, in clicking through your website? Is there anything that you can do when you can see that quieter time uh, coming? So what do you know about when your customers are purchasing products? Again, just going to do a quick reminder that you may want to pause the video to think about some of these questions. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you are, are, maybe I'm just talking enough where you're like, oh my goodness, this woman needs to, to move on. But uh, I'm hoping that you are giving a, this a lot of thought because oftentimes, uh, really kind of noodling on your experiences, looking back at records, things like that can, can provide some really terrific insight. All right, let's talk about why. Why will customers choose your product and what's your unique selling proposition? So this, this is really two different ways of asking the same question. And I want to talk about the term unique selling proposition, because if you can't identify your unique selling proposition, your customers probably can't either. 
So what is it about your product that leads people to buy from you instead of someone else? Sometimes it's obvious. If you are, are working in a blue ocean and there isn't a product out there that is comparable to yours, uh, the, the world has seen nothing like it, you've got no competition, people are, are buying your product because it, it solves a unique problem, and that's fantastic. But let's say you've got two or three competitors that do something pretty similar. There is a reason people choose you. What is it? Are you the least expensive? Uh, do you have the best response rates? Do you have the best ratings? Do you have the most referrals? Do you have the most engaging website? Is your product the highest quality? Do you have a celebrity spokesperson? What is it? What is it that's happening out there that's bringing your customers to you? Now, I told you already, we have this full course coming up, and this why question is something that we tap into with surveys um, and also with the analytics discussion, because it really allows us to dig in and say, okay, how did, how did you hear about us? Um, did you do any comparison shopping? Uh, when you did that comparison, you know, what was it that, that made you uh, decide to go with us? Asking those questions, obviously in a safe environment, before someone has purchased your product, you don't want to be encouraging them to shop around, right? But if you have a longstanding customer or maybe in the, in the post-purchase um, discussion, you have a great opportunity to learn a little bit about that customer's journey. And when they ended up selecting your product, what was it that uh, made them choose you? And then, like I said, if you don't know the answer to this question, this is a really important one to bring to the top of the list uh, and, and figure out why. When you start writing your marketing materials, knowing this is going to enable you to um, craft messages that really highlight what you have learned is meaningful and valuable to customers. All right, how do your customers find you? And how do your customers engage with your content? This is probably the one people think the least about when I uh, cover these questions, uh, because we, we tend to focus so much on the actual product itself. Uh, but the how is important as well. So for example, if we explore a a product that someone might purchase and they want to go and use it um, in their home. So they might actually walk into a, a local store and they might see a display on a shelf and they might purchase it that way. They might take it home, they might use it, and they have a question. So they can't get something to work, so maybe they go online and they look up the online instruction guide and they find a solution um, that way, but that doesn't quite work. So then they go to your discussion board and then this chat, um, have a chat with a, a sales rep and, and lo and behold, they have, have something that's now working. That whole process is something that you can learn from. So they found your product on a store shelf. Is that the first place that they saw it? Well, this day and age, probably not. They probably saw something on social media or they saw an advertisement in a magazine or they saw a billboard or they had a person you know, refer them. And in the end, maybe they walked into a store and purchased it off of a shelf. But being able to uncover and understand that journey is again, only gonna help you refine your message and help you make better choices about where you plant those seeds and, and how you spend your time. And then how do your customers engage with your content? Knowing that you have someone or you have a customer base that will go so far as to explore an online support guide that will post a discussion question or not is huge. Uh, there are entire communities uh, where the, the product support is all done through phone or um, you can own, there is no live chat, it's, it's an email system. All of that only works if your customers are willing to engage with you that way. And if they aren't, by the way, social media, the kind of the ugly side of social media as a business owner, is if people don't feel their questions are being addressed, 
they will take it to a public platform. And now why would they do that? Well, because as soon as you start, as soon as they start talking about being dissatisfied or not getting responses on social media, they know they're putting the pressure on you uh, to respond and to get back to them. So it's important to understand how your customers want to engage with you, how they want to engage with your content, how they how they uh, come across your path. What is their experience? Do they like electronics? Do they Are they on their computer a lot? Are they on mobile devices? Uh, are they not? Uh, are they primarily coming to you through referrals? All of this is going to influence your final messaging. And when you look at everything all together, we have these six questions that we talked about in detail. They all come together to paint one picture of who your customer is. And you'll find that there are components here that overlap. We already found that actually just in this in this intro. Um, the who and the what ha had that overlap of, of habits, right? The uh, where and the how are gonna have a, a lot of overlap. But really taking the time to sit down and think through each of these six questions can bring some new opportunities to light uh, that you can hopefully capitalize on. So as I've mentioned a few times now, if you want to explore this content further, we've got two more webinars for you to listen to. It, uh, the second webinar dives into kind of three techniques, some of which you might be familiar with, um, and, but others might be kind of a, a new idea for you that you want to explore. And then the third video is how to kind of put a, a plan together and just a, a handful of considerations to think through as you create something that will work well for you. So again, this video, I encourage you to listen to it again, maybe a, a second time through, taking more notes. Maybe you uh, listen to this while you're walking on the treadmill or driving to work. Uh, it is not something that typically we sit down and all the answers just kind of pour out of us. It tends to be when, you, when we think about our market, when we think about our customers and, and the ways uh, that we can connect with them in a meaningful way and, and the things that we do know about them, it, it oftentimes um, takes some time to really get all of the information that we have out onto paper. So I encourage you to do that. And I hope that in addition to listening to this again, you will also continue on to the remaining two videos. So thanks so much for listening to the first webinar in Follow the Crowd, and we hope you enjoy the rest.